I prayed for the, 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 the uh, full release of the gifts of the, of the Holy Spirit in my own life. I prayed that, that Jesus would be the Lord of my life, that I totally surrender my life to the Lord. And then I began to realize how my life changed as, as in ministry, how God just allowed me to see ministry in a whole different way. Uh, and uh, uh, I came to begin to appreciate the, the Lordship of Jesus and the role of the Holy Spirit. And I, as I look back, I believe, and I may be wrong, I believe that if that had not happened to me, I may not be a priest today because I would have probably become a very angry, uh, 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 critical, negative, judgmental uh, priest. And I had always said it as in, a, in a seminar that the one thing I don't want it to be as I would become an older priest was a critical, negative, yeah. judgmental priest. And so I, I, I really, uh, uh, asked God to, to re reveal what was missing. When he did, I realized that's, that was it. And my life has changed since then. The Holy Spirit was present and I had been baptized, not only with water, but with the Holy Spirit. He was in me, he was transforming me and being present. It, it, was, it was awesome, almost too much. Almost like, uh, Lord, can you please take this presence of yourself away? Uh, I had in my mind's eye this idea of the huge dove of the Holy Spirit following me around over me for three days. Literally, I could see it in my mind's eye. Like everybody I encountered, I just saw him in a new way. This newness of life was real and the presence of the Holy Spirit was almost too much for my heart to bear. So we look at the scriptures in the Acts of the Apostles when, when the disciples first experienced the Holy Spirit. The scriptures are really powerful. It says that while they were meeting, that Jesus uh, enjoined on them and he said, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. When Jesus speaks about waiting for the promise of the Father, while they may not have realized it, he was referencing what he had said earlier in the 11th chapter of Luke, and that is, if you then who are wicked know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit for those who ask him? So he says, go and wait for the promise of the Father. That emptiness, that fear that you have, it's not always gonna be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. So then we go in the scriptures, in the next chapter, in the second chapter of Acts, and, and honestly, it's a scene that's familiar to all of us. We've heard it so many times, but imagine this, okay? They're, they're in this room, the doors are locked, they're frightened. They're frightened because they don't want the same thing that happened to Jesus to happen to them, huh? So they're frightened, and in the midst of that, in the Acts of the Apostles, it says, a strong driving wind comes through, and, and I, I imagine what that must have probably scared them for a moment because they were like, every creak makes them nervous, and a strong driving wind, and then the scripture says, tongues of fire, I mean, that must have been remarkable. Tongues of fire are falling from heaven and, and how great and how amazing that would be. If I was God, and that, that should frighten everybody. If you have nothing else to thank God for, thank him that I'm not God because I would not be a good God. I would be a mean God, a lot more smiting. But if I was God, huh, there would be a lot more fire. I mean, there would be fire with every sacrament. We're celebrating mass. As soon as the bread breaks, fire would come flying down. I mean, uh, a marriage, as soon as they give vows, fire would come down, baptism, I don't know exactly how that would work, but there would be more fire if I was God, huh? Well, the scripture says, tongues of fire are falling down upon them. And then it goes on to say, and the crowd was astounded and amazed. Well, of course they were seeing this amazing event because something happened in that room that changed the disciples. And that same something has to happen to you and it has to happen to me. That, that I experience the Holy Spirit that changes me, that I don't live my spiritual life in this room afraid, rather I live my spiritual life in front of the world, engaging the world alive, full of joy and presence of God and power. Huh? Whatever happened to those disciples needs to happen to me. It needs to happen to you, the, the, the tongues of fire and the power of God coming upon us. Yeah, the Holy Spirit is in us, but really our experience of Him is different because he's always filling us in a fresh way. Definitely not just a one-shot deal. I mean, the idea of the Holy Spirit coming as a singular event is definitely not so, because there's one baptism in the Spirit, but there's many fillings, because the Holy Spirit fills us over and over again. And I can think about all of the times that I got filled in a different way. And then looking forward to what the Lord will do in the future, frankly, because sometimes it's like we think we have an event and it's so profound that, well, nothing ever will be like it. But God is always drawing us in deeper. The Holy Spirit is always drawing us in deeper. He's always creative in the way that He draws us in. 
and presents himself to us in a deep way.